April is Minority Health Month, and as we wind things down, we wanted to talk to Dr. Bittner about something that affects black women more than any other race. Uh, she's going to hear, she's here now to talk to us about fibroids. Maybe you've had that diagnosis or you've heard about this condition. We want to talk about what they are, but then also why it is that black women are more affected by this. Well, the, the why question is we don't really know. Is it because of more diabetes, maybe more obesity? Is it, mm -hmm. we don't really know, but okay. we know it's a big deal. So fibroids affect women in different ways, either in what we call bulk symptoms or like having this heavy mass in your pelvis that causes pain and pressure. Mm -hmm. Or is it because of heavy menstrual bleeding? Yeah. Well, okay, before we talk about the symptoms, what exactly is a fibroid? So a fibroid is a benign mass or tumor in the wall of the uterus. Okay. So the uterus is made of muscle. And it's when one of those cells gets going and just makes this whirl. It's like the inside of a golf ball or a tennis ball. It's mm -hmm. a really hard, solid ball. But this hard, solid ball isn't just static. It doesn't sit there. It makes these hormone chemicals that promote blood growth mm -hmm. and inflammation. And so they can cause a lot of pain. So again, if women aren't already in the healthcare system or don't have access to care, mm -hmm. these can cause a lot of problems. Sure, so other than pain, I mean, what would be the symptoms that we would see? Um, pressure on the bladder, pressure on the bowel. So people having incontinence or difficulty holding their bladder. Mm -hmm. um, it can cause a lot of pressure down on the legs. So there's leg pain and mm -hmm. difficulty working. Um, and then painful intercourse and, and infertility issues. So where women can't get pregnant or can't maintain a pregnancy. Okay, so what would be the uh, treatment options? So treatment options would be, you know, number one, how can we, if a woman still wants her childbearing, how can we mm -hmm. have that uterus be a healthy environment? Sometimes it means taking out that fibroid either through the vagina or what's called a myomectomy or taking mm -hmm. out that fibroid with a laparoscopic or an open surgery. So in my gynecology days, I did lots of those surgeries and it was so satisfying mm -hmm. um, to help those women have a minimally invasive surgery and get back to work. Yeah, better quality of life almost uh, immediately, I imagine. Correct. Uh, is there a chance though that they could come back? The fibroids, if your uterus has the personality of growing fibroids mm -hmm. or your, your system maybe because of high blood sugars or inflammation, mm -hmm. it's likely that yes, they could come back. So again, it's all about keeping that uterus healthy for a woman to have children if she wants mm -hmm. to, and if not, then a hysterectomy would be the next option of just taking out the uterus, okay. even leaving the ovaries. Okay, and other than having a procedure, uh, are there other ways to treat? There are medications, so some medications actually turn off the um, hormone system, so they're called mm -hmm. GnRH agonists or antagonists, mm -hmm. both types work. Um, those medicines can have comp side effects like hot flashes, night sweats, so we treat back with some estrogen. So long story, there are medication options and okay. companies are working on how we can improve the treatment. Yeah, so you're going to want to talk to your doctor if you think you might be affected by this. Uh, how does exactly. this apply to Jane? So Jane actually was just such a heartwarming story. So I was out on the street on Monroe, downtown Grand Rapids, and this woman from her car was like, ma'am, ma'am, are you that doctor? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> the one and from TV. One from yeah. TV, and she said, um, you saved my car. You saved my livelihood. She said, I heard mm. you on TV talking about pelvic pain and bleeding, and she said, I went to my doctor, and I said, if you don't help me, Dr. Bittner will. Wow. So, of course, you know, what an honor, but, you know, she finally stood up for herself and said, I don't have to suffer. Mm -hmm. And she said, I had a surgery for my fibroids, and she was able to go back to work, she was able to pay her bills, and she got her car back. Wow. So, oh, that's wow, awesome. wow, it's because awesome. It can really impact your life, as we, we heard from some of those symptoms. So uh, your takeaway tip would be? Takeaway tip is you don't have to suffer. So mm -hmm. if uh, you are suffering, or you know anyone else that's suffering, like ask for help, you don't have to suffer. Yeah, always appreciate the uh, insight, the information, just helpful. Hopefully helping somebody out there watching right so. now yes. again. Yeah. Yes. Dr. Bittner, thanks so much Thank for you. your time.